My name is Lucia Lacarra. I'm a principal dancer at the Bayes Staatsballet, which is the Munich Opera Ballet in Germany. My career, I started pretty late actually, because I'm from a very small town in Spain, so we didn't even have a ballet school. So pretty much I started when I was nine years old, year uh, but then it went kind of fast. Uh, when I was 14, I arrived in Madrid and I started training for a year with Victor Ullate. And with 15 year old, actually I was taken in the company already and I started working professionally when I was 15. I stayed in Madrid in the company for three years. And after that, I needed a change. I needed to, to see something different because I didn't really know what was out there. So I went to Marseille with uh, Roland Petit and I stayed there for another three years. It's where I discovered a bit a different world of ballet, more dramatic uh, story pieces. And after those three years, again, I somehow I, I needed to know more. I needed to, I knew there were so many different things out there and I could not stay in the same place for so long when I was young. So then I left to San Francisco and I went to San Francisco Valley, which uh, it was a great experience actually to be there and I stayed there for five years. And I went there pretty much as, as a learning experience. I knew that I didn't want to stay there forever. Uh, so after those five years, I decided I want to come back to Europe because somehow I felt very far from my family and I felt, very, I felt far from everything that was happening here. I didn't even have contact with uh, the company here, the companies, the friends. And, so after those five years, I came back and I, I went to Munich. Um, it's a wonderful city, a great theater. We have an amazing repertoire, which is a bit, in those, all those years in different places, I learned what I liked and what I liked less. So with all that in my mind, I decided to go in Germany and I've been there for eight years now. Pretty much I discovered that I'm, I'm not, a dancer that is thrilled about all the physical side of ballet, mostly meaning all the technical side of ballet. Uh, the technique is something that you have to keep working on your whole life because it's kind of a bit your, your vocabulary, it's the, the instrument that you have to, to do your job. But what I like most is the whole artistic part of ballet, it's the, the emotional part, the, the being able to play a role, being able to, to express your feelings, being able to, to play a bit with your own personality, different personalities, and, and experience more this uh, emotional, artistic life that ballet can give you instead of just the basic technique side. So that's why I, I choose Munich at, as my point of base right now, because they have a lot of uh, choices in this kind of area of artistic um, ballet, if we can call it. Um, yeah, I enjoy dancing a lot and I enjoy dancing. I still keep doing all the classics and neoclassic and contemporary, but you know, always have a, you always have an, an area where you feel more comfortable and you enjoy more, yourself more. So, you know, when you are young, you are forced to do what you like and what you don't like and when you get older you get a little bit more the chance to choose and decide you know what to do which is the good part actually. A lot of things have been challenging mostly because me I started a bit from the wrong side of the thing. I started in a company in Madrid which was a small company and we had a lot of neoclassical pieces but we didn't have classical repertoire. And then from there, I went to a company which was a very dramatic, uh, big ballet, but it was not a classical traditional either. So when I was 22 years old, I forced myself to go to San Francisco because I, even if it was not what I always wanted to do, if I was not doing it then, I would never do it. And it was I start doing Swan Lake and Sleeping Beauty and Giselle and all those ballets that you are supposed to do when you are coming out of school because it's then when you are kind of more fresh and prepared to. And me, I, I forced myself to do them because uh, I think it was important also. And it will help me or it will uh, improve me and, and I'll progress in another way. And I'm happy that I did it. I'm happy I, that I took that decision then and I keep doing those ballets now because 
of course, with the time it comes easier also and you know how to deal with them in a different way. But it was, uh, it was challenging and it was very challenging to go to the United States because the way of working is completely different, the mentality is completely different. And uh, I have to force myself to go against many things that they are part of myself, like uh, um, maybe in the United States they push you more to compete with each other, which me I don't like and I don't agree with in ballet world. But there, there were a lot of principal dancers, not enough time for everybody, so you have to most of the time work for yourself and by yourself. And I was not used to that and it was really hard, but I think more you challenge yourself to do stuff that you don't agree or you don't like, more you learn out of it. And then you can always use it in the future, or you can at least um, have an objective opinion about the things that you agree you don't, because you've tried them somehow. I loved it. I loved it being in San Francisco. I mean, the city is amazing. I loved it living there, actually. I miss it a lot. And it was really hard for me to go back to Germany because Germany, um, I didn't know Germany at all before living in Munich. And it was such a big difference that it was shocking at the beginning. And uh, it was a wonderful company. Um, I remember those five years really dearly. And uh, we, we had a great, still a very good repertoire. And, and the theater was incredible. And I really liked the, the, how the, the season was working with all those programs. Um, that it was like in blocks. Each program came in a block and you were changing, finishing a certain quantity and then going to the next one. It's a bit more messy in, in Germany because we have a full season with the whole ballets are mixed. So you are doing one thing after the other one, every week is changing, maybe in a week you have three, four different ballets and then you don't do it for two months and then you do it again. So it's, it, it was easier to work because the seasons, they were very well organized. The rehearsal time, performance time, the, the programs, the, um, so actually it was very uh, methodical as a, as a work, which it, it helps you a lot because you know what is coming and you know how to train yourself. In Germany, sometimes it's harder to do that. Well, I find that um, there is healthy competition and then there is unhealthy one. Um, it's very difficult to find a company when people doesn't compete with each other because it's in the nature, you know. You, you have several people doing, doing the same ballet or the same role and they're gonna um, kind of look at each other and try to see who is doing what, how, or maybe learning from each other, or maybe um, making like uh, differences. Or it can be a, a healthy, a healthy thing because you can learn from other people if you if you want to. And uh, what I didn't like is when it's imposed in you a bit. You know, for example, where I I didn't the part that I didn't like the most is that till a week before a performance, nobody knew who was dancing. And that I find is very extreme because you need sometimes to get uh, psychologically ready also to do something, you know? It's not just physically uh, rehearsal, it's just you need to know what, is, what you're doing so you can space yourself and you can plan the things. And not knowing till the last moment created some kind of tension that I find unnecessary between the dancers because everybody's saying, you know, like create some negativity that I think is not healthy. Healthy competition between each other is okay. As far as each one is doing their job, you know, if it pushes you to work more, it's always good. But when it pushes to just, you know, you know, create that bad atmosphere is unnecessary. It was difficult, but at the time I was so thrilled that <laughs> I, I didn't even think about it much. Um, I was given the opportunity and I was so excited because it was my, the only thing I ever wanted to do. Um, of course, it was tough because 15 years old, you're not ready to do a lot of things. And, um, but still, I, I think I did pretty well. Uh, mostly there were things that in my first company they were difficult because it was a company uh, when it's your first one you don't know how things are outside so many times you are accepting things that you are not supposed to because you just don't know don't have anything to compare them with me I have uh, a positive thing in myself that I had this uh, 
uh, it was like an inside button that after three years there, I just started feeling unhappy. And I didn't even know why. Uh, and then I realized that actually the funny thing is that after those three years, I just kind of left the company. I stopped. I decided I'm not happy and that scared me. It scared me a lot because it's the only thing I ever wanted to do. And not feeling happy, I didn't even recognize why it was that, so I just wanted to stop. So I stopped and I went home for a month and then I started to feel the need of dancing again. And it's when I decided to start auditioning and it's when I, I through a producer that I knew, I got a private audition with Roland Petit. And then is when I tried my second company that I understood why I was not happy in the first one. It's because I didn't know how things could be different in other places and I didn't know what other possibilities Valley has. And I realized that maybe after those three years, I just felt that I needed a change. So um, I think that's a lesson that the sooner you learn, the better it is. I still can see nowadays in any company that I've been, you see dancers that they are 28, 29 years old, that they've, they're frustrated, they're, they're acid about a lot of things, and they complain all the time about the things that they don't like in the place that they are but they've been there so long that they are not feeling able to change. They're scared of change. And that is, um, that is a problem because you get comfortable in a place or you don't know anything else and, and change is difficult. Uh, starting from zero is very, very difficult. And me, I had the chance that I did that very soon. With 18 years old, I was in my second company. So the second time over, I was not scared to leave Marseille and go to San Francisco because um, I figured out that it's going to be very difficult, but you learn much more from difficult things than from just staying in the same place for being afraid of not change. And um, I, think, I think that helped me a lot. Helped me a lot because it helped me that you are not supposed to accept things or just keep going being unhappy because you have the choice. It's your life, it's your career, and if you want to change, nobody should stop you just you know take your life and and decide to go for it and work for it you know i think i'm the i have nothing of a prima ballerina i never did uh, i don't even see myself like one um, me i feel so so lucky to be able to do what i always wanted to do that i I never thought even to think about it i prima ballerina is how maybe other people see me but for me i'm still the same kid uh, than when I was 15, 16 in that first company with the same insecurities, with the same uh, doubts, which I think is what helped me to keep going forward, to doubt all the time, to every single time I'm gonna do a pas de deux, a ballet, even if it's a gala and I'm dancing a pas de that I've done like 300 times, I have the same um, same will of doing good, you know, because I never feel like it's okay, I've done it, it's gonna be... It's so, I never saw myself like that and I know, I, I think that it's very unhealthy to stay stuck in your work the whole time. And uh, yeah, I made myself rules, you know, the punches, they don't go home, ever. Uh, we have a job that uh, you have a lot of extra time sometimes, like free time, half an hour here, half an hour there when you're in between rehearsals. So that's what I use to sew, like prepare my shoes. I'm all the time like in between, even when we are doing a rehearsal and my partner is rehearsing his variation, I sit down and I'm like sewing my shoes. So I know that then when I go home, I'm home. I don't think ballet, I, I just want to get out of it because I think it, it gives it keeps you healthy to be able to enjoy life for what it is, you know? When you're outside, to be able to just not think, oh, I have to prepare my shoes for tomorrow. I will hate having to do that. And no, no, I made a rule many, many years ago and they don't go in, ever. It's true that I'm, I've been doing this forever, <laughs> nearly, you know? So, um, this, and I work a lot because I, oh, my, I'm always in a company, but always do a lot of guestings with other companies and a lot of galas. So I never really had a chance to have like hobbies that I could really dedicate myself to it. I love reading, I love watching movies, I love going to the cinema, but mostly I inspire myself of, of normal life. 
you know, I, I like, I feel kind of happy and I'm proud of being such a normal person. <laughs> you know, I, I love to just get close, stay close with my family and, and I love going to spend some, like a weekend or something in my family and be considered just the normal, normal person that I always go, was there. And, and I think life has so much to teach you in normal relationship between people, in normal things like they go around and when you when you are mostly interested, like I am, in the emotional side of ballet, um, in, in playing these amazing roles that I have the chance to do, that they are very dramatic, that they are very, very intense, I think that you need to be able to experience those emotions in life, those crazy, going through all kind of crazy intensity and passion and love and sadness and happiness and... Uh, to be able to feel them in real, in your skin, to be able to play them. Because if not, it will never look real. So I, I think, you know, for me it's important to stay real, stay a normal person, not just stay a ballerina the whole time and, and live your life like if you are something precious and wanting people to treat you differently. I want to be, I want to live like a normal person and be treated like one because then I can use those real feelings when I'm on stage. I, I enjoy it. I need to enjoy what I do. And for me, like I say, dancing for me was like breathing, never. Always, always, it was like a need, more like something I liked. So I need to enjoy what I'm doing and I need to feel this, this happiness, this fulfillment. If not, I will just stop right away. Um, for example, last season I was, um, a year ago, I broke my knee on stage. I had surgery three days later and I was, uh, I could not dance for six months. I didn't even watch a ballet performance for six months because what I like about dancing is dancing. It's the feeling. It's, for me, it's kind of like a way of expression. It's my, it's the, the, it's my best way to be myself, to be completely open. I have no, 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 I don't retain anything, I just go for it, I just give myself and I didn't have the need of going to see other dancers like there are a lot of dancers that they go see others to criticize or to see who is doing my performances or how they are doing it. No, you know, I was just home, I was spending, using my time differently, I was, uh, you know, after all the therapies I was I think I think I watch every single movie that I came in the whole year, and, and uh, I just I love what I do, and it's it's some not physical thing. It's really some inside thing. So of course I use my body, and I'm I'm the luckiest person to have received a body that is made for dancing. But I like to use it as an instrument for something else, not just to show it.